In this video, we're going to discuss Amazon's new capacity manager, which is uh, basically taking the place of their old restock limits and how the new capacity manager tool works in SoStock. We just launched this. Uh, so background, uh, up until March 1st, 2023, Amazon used to use the restock limits. Restock limits were based on the number of units that you can send into Amazon FBA per market, per storage type, uh, based on various performance settings in the back end. Let's not worry about how it used to work. How it now works uh, is the same way, but it's all based on cubic feet. So when you go into Amazon Seller Central, you're going to see this little capacity monitor, little tiny thing that's almost invisible on your FBA dashboard and in some other uh, Amazon inventory pages. Uh, if you can't find it, just go search for it, capacity monitor or capacity manager in your Seller Central search field. But basically what we're doing is instead of using your restock limits based on the number of units that you have at Amazon, which they called your utilization quantity, and then your max inventory level, it's now calculated on um, your total capacity limit and it's, it's recalculated every single month. So this is a little, it's going to be a little bit of work to make all this, to make all this happen and so stocked, but we figured out a way at least um, to get you going. Because by the way, Amazon does not give us any of this data through an API. Of course, because Amazon. Uh, <laughs> Amazon's a little weird like that. Some information they don't give to third-party developers, and this is one of them. Probably because it's a new tool and they just, they're still building it out. So this stuff has to be copied and pasted. Let me get back to uh, inventory and, and sort of how this works. So on your forecast page, which is right here, you need to go up to Capacity Manager, and at first, everything is just going to be zero at the top, okay? And these numbers here are always going to default to zero and 1,000. Now, this is not true data. This is just, you have, to, you have to copy and paste and actually edit this. You're going to see that there's a little lock button here. And we've got this divided up by region or marketplace. In this case, North America. North America is U.S., Canada, Mexico combined. And I'm not going to talk about reach regional group settings in this video, but, you know, basically we're combining U.S., Canada, Mexico because of North America remote fulfillment. We're making one type of uh, forecast for all of North America instead of U.S., Canada, and Mexico, same product. Does that make sense? So anyway, we'll talk about that in another video. But this is grouped by North America and then grouped even further by storage type, standard size, oversized apparel. Now, in my case, in this demo account, we are only selling standard size. When I first logged in, this is zero and 1000. I have to replace those numbers with what Amazon actually tells me I can, what I can, my, my max capacity in cubic feet. Eventually there will be a calculation to convert cubic feet into cubic meters or whatever. But for right now, everything is cubic feet. Now, you need to go into Amazon Seller Central in the correct Amazon account. And then you need to copy and paste this number right here, which is your total capacity limit. It's the same one as far as I know. Right there, that number, you're gonna go ahead and put that here, okay? Change it from 1,000 to whatever Amazon tells you for this particular uh, Amazon seller account and this storage type. This number here technically can be calculated inside of SoStock, but for now, the first time you set this up, I would go ahead and copy and paste it from right here, okay? Now, by the way, if you go to the Capacity Manager and open this up in another tab, you will see that you do have the ability to create a new request. I'm not gonna get into this. This is not a training on how Capacity Manager works. That's You can go to Amazon Seller Central and look at that. This is a bidding system where Amazon allows you to bid for more storage types, similar to how you can bid on Amazon sponsored ads for higher ranking ads and more exposure. Uh, I just wanted to let you know about that. I'm not gonna to talk too much about that. The main point here is your utilization quantity is what I would call this, and then your max capacity limit. Those two numbers have to be copied and pasted and put here <clears throat> for each storage type. So if you have standard size, oversized apparel, footwear, you know, extra large, whatever storage types you have, they each have their own individual numbers. Once you have those numbers updated, you're simply gonna click save and forecast, save and update forecast. This is gonna take a few minutes to maybe an hour or 
probably no more than an hour, but if you have thousands and thousands of products, there are so many calculations that have to be done to recreate all of your forecasts. It might take a little bit of time. Uh, in my case, I only have a few products, so it's super fast. Okay, now that that's done, what I wanna do is I can lock this in place. If I unlock this, what happens is it says automatically updated. So these are defaulted to locked, which means these will never, this number is never gonna be auto-calculated. It is manual, you have to copy and paste it every single time. If I, sorry, if I unlock it like I just did, how that works, and uh, now I'm gonna go back to, like once you get the initial information in there, the next step that you need to do is if you come over here to your, your inventory page, which is your home page when you log into SoStock, you can type in the word cubic, or you can come down here to cubic feet, and you're gonna pull up this dashboard. We have this unit dimensions right here, okay? Now what this is doing is it's basically calculating your cubic feet um, storage, cubic feet per unit, and total cubic feet. And that's based on the unit dimensions that are inside of SoStock. Where do those unit dimensions come from? Well, let's click into this product and take a look. Amazon should send us unit dimensions on every single product when we pull that data. Now, if you've had these products inside of SoStock for a while, you'll probably need to update these dimensions. We pull this one time on the initial import of products and that's it. There's some data that we don't pull every single day because it just bogs down the system. There's so many API pull and so many API requests that we make every single day from Amazon. If we ask for every single data point on every product every single day for every marketplace, it starts to bog down the system. So this is one that isn't auto updated. So the first thing that you should do, I just wanna show you where this information comes from. The first thing that you should do if you want to do the auto updates, come in, and you're gonna to wanna to bulk update all of your um, unit dimensions. So how you wanna do that is, notice over here it says my total records and how many units or how many uh, displays per page. I'm gonna to wanna to expand this to as big as I can to make sure that I'm covering all of my products or if I wanna just do multiple pages, I might have to do multiple pages if I have thousands of products. What I wanna do is come down to bulk actions. I'm gonna go down to pull updated product details from AMZ. I'm probably not gonna to wanna to override my image and my titles because that's just too much information. All I really care about is product dimensions. I'm gonna click those two buttons. It's gonna take a few minutes or depending on how many products you have, it might take a little while because it's in real time pulling those product dimensions from Amazon. Now I will warn you that Amazon is not perfect and sometimes their API does not give us information even though we request it. That's called Amazon API throttling. There's not much I can do about it except tell you I'm sorry. Please don't shoot the messenger. Amazon's API is not perfect. That's a whole other conversation. We've been yelling and screaming and begging Amazon to fix their API for months. They are working on it, but Amazon works sometimes at a snail's pace when it comes to their API stuff. So you should now see product dimensions for all, if not most, of your products. If you see that some are missing, in this case, these are fake products, they don't really exist, or they're products that are discontinued, and so you might notice that there's empty stuff. Okay, if you have anything that didn't update, then unfortunately, the only other option is to do a bulk import of these products and upload them into SoStock. If that happens, what you wanna do is come down to Settings, uh, that's fine. I don't care about that right now. Uh, so settings, bulk import, export. It looks like Amazon throttled me and disconnected my API. So that can happen once in a while. I'll show you how to fix that too, just while we're filming this video. I don't want to get too off topic. Watch this tutorial on how to do a bulk import. I'm not going to explain it in this video because I don't want this video to get too long. It's already getting a little long. Uh, do a bulk import copy and paste those uh, dimensions in there. Now, if you do get one of those weird API issues, just go up here or you can click on this button here. You can also go to settings, connected Amazon stores, and it says your such and such has expired and just reconnect, okay? I'm not gonna go through that whole process right now just because I don't wanna get off topic. But the main point is that once you're done, you should have, this will be auto updated and what it's going to do is it's actually going to pull your product dimensions from your inventory page. Again, it's gonna pull this data here, your cubic feet per marketplace, 
and per storage type, and it's going to auto calculate your total cubic feet per marketplace and per storage type, and it will auto update this number if it's unlocked. If you want to leave it locked, then just every week go in there, copy paste, copy paste, save and update until Amazon builds an API that will auto update all this for us, which I'm not going to hold my breath. That is how the capacity manager works. Now, last point. Once that is updated, how does it know how much in, how does it know how many products to send based on your capacity? It's actually the same way that the old restock limit tool worked uh, up till about a week ago, where it's basically <clears throat> ranking all of your products uh, per region and per storage type based on their velocity. Okay, so if I had a you know my highest velocity products are going to get a larger percentage of the cubic feet allocation, basically. Highest velocity equals highest allocation of restock uh, cubic feet. Then you can go in and you do have an option on some of your products. When you click into the product calculation variables, this is exactly how the old restock limit tool worked. You can also make it a high priority product. So let's say this is a slower selling product, but I wanted to give it a little bit more of that allocation juice. I can click this and we'll inflate that product and assign it more cubic feet. I'm not going to get into exactly how all the math works behind it because it's a bit complicated, but just if you're used to the old restock limits tool, it works the exact same way. Uh, that's all on this video for now. Uh, it's getting long and I want to keep this as quick and you know as possible. We'll probably film additional videos to troubleshoot to uh, as the tool progresses, but that should be enough to get you started. Cheers.